House of God, are we in a mortuary? Come on. Come on. This is not the house of God. This is not the church. You are the church. Come on. You are the church. Anytime you could turn this place in a cockpit arena. And as much as we want to take care of it, honor it. But the Bible says there'll come a time that there'll be no stones upon its other. Right? You are the temple. Say, I am the temple. Uh, for today, let me just go to the word. I know I could just do a lot of, of bunny trails. I want to achieve three things today. Uh, if we uh, know this for the past almost a month, uh, Pastor Bobby had been resonating it. Uh, a very timely, strategic word for us. Strategic word. Don't you know that God is a God? He's a man of war, and he's a God of strategies. The Bible says that he trained my hands for war, trained my fingers for battle. Ha! Whew! Talking about war freak. <laughs> Come on, war freak against the enemy. No mercy at the words of the enemy. Are we still here? No mercy. Right? We're going to be relentless. Come on. When Joshua took the entire uh, Canaan land, the word that was used was cocos patos. What's the meaning of cocos patos? Total massacre. Wiped to the ground. <laughs> Woo! Total wipe out. Come on, that's what we need. Right? Either you're 100% for Jesus or you're nothing. You can never be 99.9%. .9 because the area that you leave undone, that's going to be the entryway for the enemy. God hates someone who's going to be lukewarm. Or I might as well say frozen. Come on. I believe far is coming in the house. And, and it was so strategic what he had. Oh, hallelujah. The napkin is joining with me. Uh, let's go very quick. Uh, Daniel, I'm just going to give you the verse. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 49. The word. He had given us the word about the Lord's Supper, communion. There's something about the blood. In the quantum level, the blood is nothing but congealed light. Don't you know the blood had a voice? That's why the enemy loves your blood. He want to take your blood. He want to take your voice. He want to take, take your life. Come on. Amen. He's an illegal alien. He needs, come on, he needs a container, right, to inhabit and we're going to dislodge him. We're going to cast him out. Come on. No one's allowed to date with the enemy. Come on. Are we still here? Amen. You cannot hands, hold hands with God at the same time dating with the devil. Come on. You need this. You need strong word that's going to put some spine at your back. We need strong meat. Come on. I always say, whenever I serve strong meat, I don't serve fajita. I serve dinosaurs. Ha! Come on! When it comes to soup, I don't serve jalapeno soup. I serve devil soup or gunpowder soup. Come on! Are we still here? Come on, are we still here? Amen. We have come to intimidate the enemy. And when we step in, the enemy doesn't have any option but to go out. He may come, the Bible say, come in one way, but flee seven ways in fear and trembling and in terror. Don't you know, Judah, it was not a cute little jazzy sound that they released, that they resonate. It was something that's screeching, terrorizing the enemy. Come on. 
That's why I want to release my sound because I'm a voice. I want to be even louder than the PA system. Come on! I want to be in a crowd. I want to be in a game. But even I'm in the midst of something that's loud and noisy and a lot of commotion. Hey, I don't lose my identity. Come on. Heaven is not about doing things. It's about being things. For the longest time, we've been saying, be do, be do, be do, or do, be do, be do, instead of be do, be do, be do. Because we're human beings, we are not human doings. Are we still here? The kingdom is all about identity. It's all about identity. Not only we've been identified with God, but God has identified himself with us. Wow. Not only he died for you, he died as you and you died as him. Are we still here? Uh, do we have uh, uh, John eleven forty nine? 49? I don't want to say fasten your seal belt, lose your seal belts. I want you to be hijacked today. I want you to be raptured today. The late granddad prophet Bob Jones, uh, he said he's been multiple rupture in a day, five times being ruptured. Come on. Are we still here? Enoch was ruptured. Pray cross. Elijah was ruptured pre-cross. Come on, what are you waiting? Amen. You could engage, you could access. Your success is based on your access. Come on. And what you're aware of, you could be able to access and disseminate wherever you are and be able to shift the very atmosphere. Because you carry an environment within you. Come on. Circumstance never changes you. It just magnifies who you are. Problem never changes you. And we heard a lot of people say, hey, when he had a lot of money, he changed it. No. Money is immoral. It just magnifies who you are. That's why before it comes, before your million comes, you better have the right stuff, not only being at the right place at the right time, but also being the right person. Come on. Because you don't want to squander your breakthrough. Amen. Amen. And we should be walking, living breakthroughs. Before there could be breakthrough, God is going to break something first in the inside of you. Come on. Are we still here? Because the sky is not the limit. Your mind now is the limit. It's not really the problem. It's the way you see the problem. What's the problem? The sky is now is not the limit. It's your mind. Woo! But the good news, we could be able to access the mind of Christ. Ah. You know what's the mind of Christ? That is the power of the age to come. I don't know if you could, could take that. Whew. I said the power of the age to come. Oh! Ha! Is this good? Come on, are we going to just sleep or what? Let's go home. Pray for me. The, stand your hands and follow up to me and say, Lord. Come on, louder. Say, Lord. Lord. We pray. That the rock priest won't be boring today. In Jesus' name. Man. <laughs> right. If you find God boring, you haven't found him yet. Come on. A lot of people here. There's a, a way back in the 80s, we were, I love hard courts. I was listening, we were listening to Dead Angels. Uh, yeah. Uh, heavy metal, their Filipino band grew in California. They have that song, I'm Bored. We, we, we could hear a lot, always, kids here are bored. Man, get saved. Get live. God's the most powerful thing. Come on, how could you be bored, man? Are we still here? We have John 11, 
up to so forth and so on. Up to 52. Okay, Caiaphas, who was the high priest at that time, said, you don't know what you're talking about. Let's continue. Where's my projector guy? Okay, let me just speak in tongues. Okay, let me just speak in tongues. Okay, Caipas was the high priest at the time. Okay? You don't realize that it's better for you that one man should die. He's talking about Jesus for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. He didn't say this on his own as a high priest at that time. He was led to prophesy that Jesus will die for the entire nation. And not only for that nation, but to bring together and unite all the children of God scattered around the world. Now, this was the prophet. And he was a high priest. But he hit something. He was able to prophesy something. This is what I call a prophetic sleep. When a leader, when an inspiring leader, and every one of us are leaders, or any father, function, calling, offices, they begin to prophesy, begin to hit something. It's in every one of us in our own uh, levels are leader, right? Hey, if, if you don't need someone to lead you, to brush your teeth, you're a leader. Right? Each and every one. Never say, I'm not a leader. And a leader is nothing but who serves. You have to mention Lazarus. Otherwise, everyone who were dead, they're going to raise up from the dead. Right? So where am I? Here, the real life. <laughs> so when the leader begins to hit something, just like this past election, okay, it's not really a matter of who's Hillary or Trump. It's really looking at the bigger picture, the God picture, the agenda of God. Please get over it. If you're offended, we were offended. I mean, we could have all the right to be offended by Trump because he says Filipinos are terrorists. He said that. Come on. But we don't have to take that offense. Come on. Amen. We're talking about a bigger picture than, our, than us Asians or our ethnicity, it's all about the blueprint. Come on, it's all about the mandate, the call, the agenda of God for this nation as an apostolic nation. Come on, as a nation that's going to pioneer. I'm prophesying right now. And let me add into my prophecy. Now, we're entering into a season that there's going to be a massive repentance in the body of Christ. What do I mean about massive repentance? It's not about being remorse and, and being religious crying. Repentance means change of mind. Hey, how many times I do have multiple repentance in a day? We have to change our mind in context, the way we treat the Bible, the way we treat God. Hello. Amen. Right? And we cannot carry with our old extra baggages, hello, with the same old mindset that we have. The reason why God is shifting your minds because He's shifting lanes, He's shifting seasons. And the good thing about that, we're not limited in whatever season that you're in. You're not limited because you have a realm. Woo! Which are greater than seasons. And he wants you to be fruitful in every season. Come on. That's why I never say, I'm in a season. Of, yeah. Get over it. Right? Are we still here? If you're bankrupt, you're poor, if you're weak, come on, hang around with the most almighty, all powerful, wealthiest of all. And his name is Jehovah God. And there's no way that you could associate with him and not be like him. You want to be prophetic? Come on. Hang around with Jesus. 
Hang around with the Holy Spirit. I mentioned about a while ago that we have the mind of Christ, right? We have the mind of Christ. Amen. It's in us. But where is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is in God. So it means you are in God. Before anything could take place, whoo, you're going to know things ahead of time. Come on. We're going we're gonna to fry some brains today. We're going to kill some sacred cows today. Come on. Are we still here? Hey, I heard, I heard Donald Trump talk about the, the, the Trojan, Trojan horse. And there's something about leaders. There's something about you, dad. There's something about our, our leadership here. When they begin to prophesy and hit things in the spirit, you better pay attention. You better calibrate yourself. You better fine tune yourself. And sometimes the mess in us, the weight in us is that you need a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of fine tuning, a little bit of recalibrating, a rewiring of you, who you are. And what God is doing in the last days, the upgrades and the updates, is not just like an iPhone 6 going to an iPhone 7. It's going to be totally out of this world. Ha! Huh. No template. Come on. No reference from the past. But the Holy Spirit. That's why the more you don't know where to go, what to do, the better for you, good for you, because you have to depend on God. Sometimes it's good for you to lose your map. Sometimes it's good for you to lose your GPS. The Bible says, Abraham followed God, did not know where to go. By faith. Because when you step into faith, the new seasons of your life starts. Your new seasons are waiting for you. Don't wait for your season. Come on. Can I have that grit look in you? Yeah. Hardcore look. Come on. Are we still here? Oh, is this too much? We're just starting. We're just priming the pump. We want a meteor to hit us, to change the total landscape of everything. Come on. Right? So you better pay attention to your leaders, to your parents. Be, and I think it would be more powerful when you hear yourself some, saying something. No one could bring you down unless you let them by confirming by the words of your mouth. Jesus said, take no thought saying. Don't take the thought saying. What shall I wear? What shall I eat? What money? Don't take the thought saying. I always says that, that birdie, you know, I thought, I thought, I took booty cat. Please don't take the thought saying, don't put substance into it. Amen. Nothing could be more powerful. Maybe you're blessed right now. Who among you the first time will hear me today? First time you haven't heard me yet? No one? No one? Okay, good luck. God bless. <laughs> Nothing could be more powerful than you hear yourself saying, because when you say the word of God as if you're writing, signing the contract. Come on. And the enemy doesn't have any defense against the word that has been released against him. Are we still here? Yes. Now let me add, when Jesus was tempted on the cross, they are all mystical temptations. Bread, in, stone into bread, brought into the mountain, about angelic. They are all mystical temptations. And let me ask you, what kind of temptation are you facing? I don't have any food. I don't have any money on my gas. Man, get saved. I just know. I've been practicing. The moment I pop my consciousness, there's going to be food on my, my table. There's going to be gas on my truck. Come on. There's going to be meals on my jeans. Are we still here? Come on. Right? Amen. Every day, my mindset is to ransack heaven. 
Come on. Amen. Are you still here? In connection of what Pastor Bobby said about communion, and let me just, if you want to write it, in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27, okay, when three kingdoms have joined together to fight the Moabites, and they went to a prophet, Elisha. That's why it's wonderful when, when kings and prophets stand in together. The kings go out for battle. These are the marketplace people who goes out into battle and bring this spoil back into the kingdom. But they don't go without the voice, thus saith the Lord. So before they went, they, they asked for their ministry. But because these people, they're kind of anti-Christ, anti-anointing, because of the two kings, and Elisha said, give me a minstrel. And the minstrel came. <laughs> and the anointing was there. And there was a prophecy that they will defeat the enemy, the Moabite. And lo and behold, the prophecy was being fulfilled. But you know what the Moabite kings did? When they were being defeated, he took his son, turned him upside down, slit his throat, offered him. And by that, they won. A prophecy was released. But how come the enemy won? Because there's a protocol in the heavens. There's a protocol in the heavens, in the spirit. Whoever pays with the highest cost wins. And nothing could be more costly. Nothing could be more precious. Nothing could be more powerful than the blood of the Lamb. That's why the defeats that you have, seemingly failures that you have, they're just illusions. They're just illusion. But I could feel them. It's true. See, I'm negative. I'm over drugs. Because those things are subject to change. They're temporal things. It might be true. It might be a reality. But there's a greater reality that exists. Which is the word of God. Come on, heaven and earth shall pass away. But never my word. Come on, it's going to abide forever. Hello, you might be broke today, but just like that, God could show up. Hey, you don't need, I don't need any financial miracle. What I want is divine prosperity. Because miracle is, is the, the nature of God. The nature of God is abundance. Miracles only happens when there's a need. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, help me out. And period. He had put, I shall not want money. I don't want, I don't want girlfriend or food, whatever. Because otherwise, he's going to put something there. He's going to mess up the entire verse. Come on. There you go. Religious people, oh, God's only providing our need. And not our wants. Come on. Come on, get over it. That's an excuse for your weakness. That's an excuse for a less faith, for your doubt and unbelief. Never were the disciples were rebuked. Ho ye, ho ye, mo, or, ho ye stronger faith? You always say, oh ye, less faith? He never rebuked them with too much faith. And with our weaknesses, we go to 1 Corinthians 13, a chapter of love, and we say, see, do I speak with tongues of men or of angels? Hey, if you're speaking tongues, it says tongues of angels. How does that sound? Hmm. And he said, I might speak with tongues of angels if I don't have love, blah, blah, blah. Though I may move mountains, if I don't have love, I'm nothing. Even if I give myself for charity, hey, get over with. You got the love of God. That's why you could speak in tongues. You have the love of God. 
that have been shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. That's why you can move mountains. What if part of the love of God is just He won't equip you with tongues, with moving of mountains, with unlocking of mysteries? No, that's a byproduct of the love of God. Come on, and we always say, let's go back to our first love. Hey, your first love is not the love when you got saved. Your first love, it was before even time had begun. That's why you're, you're wimpy, you're up and down your first love because you always go back to the first love of your encounter. Hey, go beyond. Go beyond. Right? Of who you are. Our quest for our life is really unlocking of who we were from eternity past. Come on. Otherwise, you won't be sitting there. Otherwise, God won't give you, I mean, a voice, a blueprint. You are a signature. I, 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 the meaningness and the essence of who you are is so unique. Otherwise, he won't, you won't be sitting there. You won't be created by God. Are you still here? Come on. We, want, we need to unlock your voice because you're not a cheap, hollow echo. Are we still here? Because anything that's hollow is weak, superficial. Come on. And all the strength that we need is that even against the devil. Because the devil is not the enemy of God. Your carnal mind is the enemy of God. Romans chapter 8, it says that to be carnally minded is enmity against God. The enemy was totally defeated. The enemy of God is your carnal mind. And the strength that you need is that even against the enemy. You know where do you need the strength? To handle the glory, to handle the world, to handle the commendation of man, to handle what God has made available to you. It takes God to handle God. It takes God to love God. Because there's nothing that you could give God that you haven't received first from Him. Is this good stuff or what? Ah! Let's move on. Second category. I want to pray specifically for people who have been suffering or loved ones with epilepsy today. Seizure. Why? Because of the super moon that we had. In Matthew 17, when Jesus came from an encounter from the mountain, and the parent went to Jesus. He said, my son was struck, was moonstruck. Or other word, epilepsy. And I took the meaning of that. Look for the meaning of epilepsy. means to be afflicted, possessed, uh, something like that. And the enemy have taken the advantage from October, which is the, the, the month of voodoo and witchcraft. Hello. Amen. I know I'm called to embarrass the witches. And I know witches, they're none but prophetic. They don't know yet. That's why they need to be saved. Come on, that's true. Come on, that's true. They just don't know. Unbelievers just don't know. Right? Sad to say there are a lot of unbelieving believers. <laughs> that's the words. Miserable. The Bible says the God of this world that blinded their eyes from unbelieving to, to see the glorious gospel. You know what, what hinders the gospel? It's a veil. And the meaning of veil is lift the veil means revelation. When God starts to lift the veil, you'll begin to see the revelation. Hey, what's going to take place for a moment? God's going to pull down the curtain or lift the veil. What you're going to see? Elijah's pray. For his servant Gehazi, or Gehazi, he said, Lord, open his eyes. And he saw throngs of chariots of fire. Now what defeats you? What forfeits your blessing? A stigma. Come on. A stigma. You don't see it. Come on. 
Because what you could be able to see, you could be able to access it. That's why it's the year of the Ayin. Come on. Amen. Are we believers? Do we need to see before we believe or we believe first before we see so that we could see? Come on. And God is transitioning us from believing into knowing. I don't believe God's going to provide my need. I know. Come on. I don't believe he's a healer. I know. I don't believe Jesus is Lord. I know that Jesus is Lord. Let me ask you, what do you know? Come on, what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Come on, what do you know? The Bible says those who know their God, they'll be strong and do mighty exploits. And we want to jump from knowing to strong and go right away to the exploit. Lest we want to need the strength to contain the glory, the exploit that do come from nowhere. How well do you know him? Come on. Hmm. Hmm. When you know it, that's why Elisha be able to access the chariots of fire. Because what he saw will never be taken away from him. Because when he was trying to pursue Elijah, until he was taken up by the chariots of fire, what you saw, what you receive, what you know will never be taken away from you. Come on, are you more of a problem oriented person? Now, problem doesn't exist in my vocabulary because it never exists in the vocabulary of God. Why being vexed and problems if you could ask? Actually, if you could demand, whatsoever you ask, it's the word demand, whatsoever you demand in my name. That's why when I pray for sick people, I demand brand new body parts. <laughs> Come on, if causes, auto causes have spare parts, Ah, how much more? The storehouse of heaven. Come on, don't short circuit the blessing, the steady current flow of blessing. Let me just go, 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 very quick. Anyone epilepsy, epileptic? Any friends or any? Listen up. Someone? Lay hands on uh, Edward. Anyone else? Friends? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, a friend, you? Okay, both. Just uh, put your hands on your reason. Put your hands on our brother here. Father, we thank you. <laughs> we speak, God. Everything that's been affected, Lord God, deep down the recesses of anyone who needs a specific prayer of deliverance, of healing. Lord, anything that's been affected. Lord, any, any faulty bloodline, fault in the DNA, faulty DNA. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we release the supernatural divine DNA of the Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, just like that, just like that, just like that, just like that. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be very quick. I'll be very quick. The greatest expression of faith is not the supernatural. I love the supernatural signs and wonders. But the greatest expression of faith is rest. Surrender. And there are times faith spell risk. You have to take a risk. But there are times that you need to just totally conceal and yield yourself. The greatest battle of all have been waged, not by raising any single form of weapon, by total surrender on the cross. In Hebrews chapter 3, last verse, it says that they saw signs and wonders every day. Dividing of the Red Sea. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me facilitate the question. Have you ever prayed for someone? 
Or you pray that you got an answer prayer? Anyone here? Can I see your hands? Oh, only a few? Come on, it should be 100%. Anyone who prayed and received? Or maybe pray for, for healing and, and people got healed? What did it do to you? What did it do to you? It impacted you, right? Your faith grew, right? Come on. Let me ask. What do you think happened to Moses? When he stood before the Red Sea and that Red Sea turned into water of walls. Ah. What do you think happened to Joshua when he said, Son, be still? And God just uh, dropped these things while I was driving. Wow. Just imagine seeing the, the water being split at the middle. Man, you'll never be the same. He saw the feeding of the multitudes, millions. He saw the cloud of fire, the cloud, right? The pillar of cloud, the fire by night. But he said, I want to see your glory. <laughs> oh, he saw the miracles. Come on. He said, it's not enough. I want to see your glory. Let me just reel, release a room that I carry right now. In Habakkuk, it says that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory. The glory is already there, but people don't know it. There's going to be an unlocking. A shifting, a person. Don't you know every generation there's a, a veil keeper, a gatekeeper? And the Bible says, even the gates of hell. He was mentioning about the ecclesia. He didn't say the temple, he said the ecclesia. The ecclesia is a legislative body. Who stand on the court to of God. That's why nature, creation, are waiting for your voice. Water is long again to be walked upon. Romans chapter 8 it says, even the creation groan it, it means groans, there's a travail, there's a voice. Ha! Ah. For the manifestation of the sons, matured sons. My job as a prophet pastor is to bring myself to a point that I don't work anymore. I mean, I don't need it. I'm not needed anymore. That you don't need me anymore. I brought you to a place that you yourself, a prophet is not someone who prophesies. A prophet is someone who make others hear God likewise. A teacher is not someone who loves to teach. A teacher is someone who loves to study. And my byproduct of that, there's an overflow of the revelation. My job is to bring myself out of job, out of work. <laughs> that you're not dependent on me anymore. That you yourself would hear God. Ha! Yourself could engage the heavenlies. Oh, this is good. I sense the presence of God here. Ooh. Second Corinthians 5.13 says, Lord, if we're crazy out of ourselves, behind ourselves is because of you. And if we're sober because of the people. It's him. Because, hey, he's not a grumpy God. It's a blissful, glorious, crispy cream, caramel macchiato, who non-pasteurized, blissful, ecstatic, 
gospel. <laughs> Never be the same. May each and every one of us that are under the sound of my voice will never be the same again. The reason why I wear this is so that you remember this day, <laughs> the message. <laughs> that you won't forget the message. Because I get to preach, I think, once a year. And that's good for me. I don't want to be stale. <laughs> In the Philippines, every day we preach. We have a 24-7 ministry. We go home 5 o'clock in the morning, sleep a little bit, study, and we preach again. And when I came here in the States, I get to preach. If my worth and value is in what I do, what if I don't do the things that I used to do? Your worth is not in what you do. It's who you are. It's who we is first. Another part of my job is to provoke you to be who you are. You are a voice. Come on, to be who you are. Are you still here? To be who you are. Ooh, please never pray the prayer. I know it sounds good. I'm guilty. Lord, I might decrease and you may increase. That's baloney. You know, the context of that where it was talking about the ministry of John the Baptist, the prophetic ministry, and in relation of Jesus. Hey, he doesn't want it when you were not there. That's why he created you. Come on. Are we still here? You're not a random biological accident out of the blue mushroom being. And let me just say this. We're human beings, right? But before you became a human being, what are you? Say, Bob. <laughs> You're a spirit being. Come on. You're a spirit being. And one of the strategies I'm going to download, I'm going to do it very quick. Your most powerful divine moment will come when you're sleeping. Because when we sleep, our spirit never sleeps. Actually, we travel. A lot of times the Bible speaks about traveling in the spirit. Enoch was one. Elijah was one. Philip was one. Jesus was one. Come on. And he says that Greater than these things you shall do, greater works, because I'm going to leave the Father. It means when he was alive, he was not doing the greater works. The greater works only started when he left. So he's still majoring on the lesser works, not doing the greater works. Come on. Jesus subdued the four elements. He went to here on earth. Come on. He ascended Acts chapter 2, the air, earth, air, wind. Right? Water, he walked above the water, and fire, he went to hell. If Jesus was like that, he's the firstborn, we don't need to become lesser. Come on, he's the prototype, right? Come on. Come on, are we still here? Are we still here? Whew. I want to say a lot of things, but put on, on the thing about dreaming. Because I see to it that before I go to bed, I'm congruent. My spirit, I soak in the word I, so that when I sleep, God could do so much. That's why the Bible says he gives sleep to his beloved. Now, you could have a sleep and not rest. But you could have rest that even you didn't sleep. But it's good that you could do together. So I see to it for the past maybe a year or so, I was every time I go to bed or rest or meditate, I'm so congruent, aligned with God. It was on June 30. You have that? 
I was about to retire. That was 3 o'clock, but I texted Pastor Bobby around 5.55. June 30, 2016. This is my text. I said, I don't know if it's a dream or a vision. Most of the time, people who travel, they don't know if it's a dream or a vision. I saw you got a silver kind of mini SUV car. And he said, Amen. That was June 30. And July 17, on a Saturday. Next. Let's wait. <laughs> Woo it's coming. It's coming. Sun's way. Are you good? But who among you, Pastor Bobby, July 17th, Saturday, he got a mini SUV X3 BMW, silver color. If it could happen once, if it could happen to me, That's how they engaged Daniel, Joseph. They have a snippet of things and they begin to engage that. What are you receiving? Maybe <laughs> mostly nightmares? Is that, don't go to bed for the sake of just going to bed. Trick yourself. Put some soaking music. Put some worship. And one strategy I will download. Let me just dive, uh, uh, land the plane. If you could get an app, Bible audio app, where you could put it on a repeat mode. Because if you have certain issues, we do it. We do these things. Personally, me and my wife, we do these things. Okay? And many times she troubled too in the spirit. During EGR, she had a problem with her boss. She went to her office in the spirit. Dealt with it. And lo and behold, the perfect boss. She had now the perfect boss. You could go travel in the spirit. Before we went here in the States, she saw that her papers in the immigration, a black guy took her papers and put it at the top. Now let me ask, what are you saying? What are you engaging? You could know things. You could train yourself. So if you ever you have an issue of health, you ask. Maybe go to Peter. It speaks about by stretch for heal. Put that in an audio mode, maybe. Even when you're driving, or when, especially when you go to bed, so that the Word of God could minister to you. The Word of God could be implanted in your heart. In Mark chapter 4, it says that the kingdom of God, it works this way. A man planted, and he went to go to bed, and after a while, he saw it. Actually, I have a friend, Millie Bennett. She went to a place. She saw some tomato plants. No, 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 no fruits. She prayed over it, released the glory. The following morning, there were fruits. Hey, we better unlock what belongs to us. Abram, close to 100, there was no Viagra, but Vava Voom was stored back in the bedroom. Come on. Come on, are you embarrassed? Our God is a complete God. Are we still here? Come on. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus prayed for Peter, mother-in-law. You want to go there? Yeah, I'm done, I know. Matthew chapter 8, this is the last verse. Thank you. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Uh, by the way, 
Moses was never the same again, right? And there was a mention, he said, to the rebellious son of they were, of the Israelites says, if you're going to rebel, the ground's going to, they're going to eat you. You're going to be swallowed by the ground. Man, the very creation. In Joshua chapter 10, God used the hailstone. In Judge chapter 4 and 5, the consolation, it caused the water to ever flow to overcome the enemy. Now, the, the, the new agers, the voodoo, the witchcraft, have tapped into these things because we don't occupy them. Come on, we don't utilize them. If you want to occupy it, someone's going to utilize it. The three wise men, or are they three? They're following the stars. In Deuteronomy, it says the heavenly was given for us not to worship, but as a form of inheritance. Anything that's going to activate your seer anointing, your sensitivity in the spirit, do it. Matthew chapter 8. You got it, Danielle? I'm going to end here. You know, every time you hear a pastor say, I'm going to end here, he's lying. So you better cast out the spirit of lying. He needs deliverance. Matthew chapter 8. You remove the million. Okay, Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to be very quick. And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother in law. Woo! So you better minister to your mother in law. Oh, see, God is going to reconnect you to your mother in law. Okay. Lying ill with fever, verse 15, he touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began waiting on him. He started to serve. Healed people don't have the right, the reason to stay in bed. When you claim I'm healed, I'm healed, please get out of bed. When evening came, they brought him many who were under the power of demons. One person sick. My mentor says to me, one person raised from the grave, man. Whoo! Everything's going to be massive. And he drove out the spirits with a word and restored to help all who were sick. I believe we're coming into a season of all. All saved, all healed, all delivered, all prospered. Are you building your faith with that? And it says, last verse. After he did this, verse 17, and thus he fulfilled, talking about Jesus, what was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, he took to carry away our weakness and infirmities bore away. Hey, Isaiah 53 was about the crucifixion. Jesus was not yet crucified. How come he was able to fulfill? The prophecy here, Isaiah, Jesus was here. Look at me, look at me. I'm not there. Everyone. Everyone, I love you too much to offend you. Come on. I, 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 bother, I better slop you than the devil first. The prophecy was here. Jesus was here. Healed the mother-in-law. And he's going to die here. How come he was able? Man, he, he bent time. Don't you know who inherited the, the, the miracle sign and wonders of Moses? Are the Gershonites? They do water bending. Whatever you have, you disseminate to your kin, to your children. Are we still here? Right? The reason why my kids are prophetic because I am a prophetic person. And my ceiling. Come on. Is their floor. Father, we thank you today. Awesome. We can afford to be overwhelmed by any other things, but only you. 
We cannot afford to think, to dwell on the things of the things that you're not doing. And even when you're doing things, God, we know who you are. Father, I pray for these people right now in the name of Jesus. That there's no more casual Christianity. Earthly Christianity is fading and dying. Something heavenly right now is taking place. It's right here, right now. Father, I pray that you're going to hijack each and every one. Hammer them, walk them with your glory. That Lord will never be the same again. That never again we're going to sell out our birthright, God. From what this world could offer. Father, right now, I release your networks and entourage of angels upon each and every one that's going to unlock every destiny, unlock every scroll, unlock every blueprint, God, upon each and every one, families, upon every bloodline, upon every career, anointing, mantles, calling, offices in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the fire is going to unlock the DNA, the faulty DNA, God, the bent in our DNA, Father God, the iniquity in our bloodline. Father, I thank you that even the last will be first right now. Lord, I thank you that you're raising up, Father God, people who seemingly are common, people who are a faceless, a nameless generation that you're going to raise up, God, in the last days. And Father, I thank you, Lord God. Lord, in the hidden, in the privacy, Lord, you're doing history. Stand on our feet. Sing